Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number 16 of Uncomfy Combos. This is your boy, Shiv, your dude, your guy, whatever you want to call me. Uh, and today we are going to talk about Olympic anxiety. You know, if you have a big aspiration, a big goal, big dream, you're trying to reach it, you know, maybe a lot of pressure comes with that. Maybe, maybe you, you know, you don't hit it, you don't get there the first time, uh, and you have to deal with that pressure. Uh, and today we have a guest who's very qualified uh, on speaking on this topic. Uh, she, uh, she's a comedian in the city. I met her at a show recently. Uh, very funny. Uh, she performs all around the city. Um, and she has also been a professional swimmer. That's right. A comedian and a professional swimmer. Um, she was a six time all American swimmer at the university of Texas, won the 2013 NCAA title in the 200 yard breaststroke won a silver medal in the 2012 FINA World Swimming Championships uh, in Istanbul, Turkey. So she traveled, she's been around the world. Uh, her time of two minutes, 16 seconds, 93 milliseconds, I think that's milliseconds, in Turkey remains the second best all time among American women in the short course 200 meter breast, breaststroke. Her best time in the long course version of the event ranks 12th. Uh, she's been an Olympic trials finalist in the 200 meter breaststroke ahead uh, of both Beijing 2008, London 2012. Uh, she reached the semifinals of trials for Rio 2016. Uh, and now she's doing comedy in the city. Uh, so without further introduction, thank you so much for being on, Laura Soger. Hi, thank you for having me. Uh, I really, this trip down memory lane. Yeah. <laughs> Those painful, painful swims that I did. <laughs> <laughs> they sounded intense. Hold on, first, before, it's Sogar. So, did I, I said it right. Sogar. I, you know, yeah. Got it. Whatever you want to call Laura it's, Sogar. It's five letters, but people come up with so many different ways to pronounce it. I'm just like, sure, whatever you want. <laughs> well, there's literally, it's, I think there's like a 50 50 shot. Because yeah, you can't. Exactly. A lot of people go Sogar. I'm like, there's no H or E. But whatever, <laughs> it's fine. I used to be called also, it's a big sports thing to get called by your last name. So like, I didn't get called Laura at all through high school or college. I was always called Sogs or Sogi or Sogar. Really? Oh yeah. How did that make you feel? I didn't know any better. It was my life. I was just, <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, this, is, this is fine. We just all call, I don't know. It's like a, a sports thing, I guess. Yeah, but. yeah. Um, I think that's 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 very sh Shogar though. I don't get that the H. So I actually that one was one at work where like my boss's boss would always be like, and Laura Shogar, <laughs> you can't correct him, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, absolutely, sir. You sign the checks. You sign my paycheck. It's Shogar for you as long as you get the social security number right, the banking routing number. That's fine. <laughs> you can go with whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, I just find it so interesting. Like, there's no H. I know. Or E. Or E. O G A R. <laughs> yeah. Um, sugar. South. I, uh, I find it so interesting. We did, we did a comedy show together about a month ago, and I did not know you were a swimming prodigy. You yeah, I usually don't lead with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, comedy is like relatable, and everyone's like, oh, I don't know if I need to talk about how I spent most of my childhood in a chlorine bath. Yeah. yeah if you i feel like if you were like yeah I, I swam professionally like up top in your set it'd be an uphill battle oh my God. well it's kind of funny i'm trying to write material about my swimming career. like i have so much unique stuff from swimming but it's just not relatable it's very 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 difficult i want to get some good material together by next next year now with the new with the olympics in 2021 yeah. Um, so I have a full year to try to piece together a couple minutes of swimming related stuff. Oh, wow. We'll see. So you wouldn't say, so you're saying like right now you want to develop that swim material? I do because I think there's just so much funny shit that comes with like growing up. Like I went to like camps to like, like I didn't have a normal childhood because of this sport. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so there's like some inherently funny, there's definitely something in that. Yeah. Uh, but having to, to take that and kind of relate it to the human experience or whatever and make it to where people kind of get what I'm talking about, 
uh, is a little bit more challenging when you're, I'm still fairly green as a comic. So I was like, yeah. maybe I'll just do a couple of relationship jokes, like, you know, get my, get my feet under me, relax. It's fine yeah. <laughs> before I tackle like yeah. more advanced material. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would be very relatable. Relationships are tough, guys, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> wow, dating <laughs> in New York City is hard. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, no, that makes sense. That may, It sounds like a very unique uh, upbringing in terms of swimming. Um, I mean, just from seeing kind of like your accolades in swimming and, you know, uh, doing like those Olympic trials and stuff, um, it must have required a lot of discipline growing up. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I started swimming when I, I have the mommy and me certificate from the little swim lesson thing, like a year and a half, you're like old. So I yeah. was very, very, I was a baby when I first started swimming and they put me in all the lessons and I went straight from lessons to, to swim team. I started competitively swimming at five, mm -hmm. which what the fuck? Like now looking back, I look at five-year-olds and I'm like, competitive, what? <laughs> like they're children, they're babies. Yeah. And uh, I didn't stop until I retired at like 25, 25, 26. So I swam competitively for 20 years. Um, and as a, I was really tall. I do have some jokes about being very tall as a kid. Yeah. Um, I was a big girl. I was a full grown adult, but like as a child. But as a result, I was really good at swimming back then um, because I was so large partially. And like, you know, I had really good coaches and all that. So they taught a lot of the, the technique needed so I was fast really young um which meant that I was like going on a bunch of like international or like U.S. competitions like since I was like 11 12 years old um and totally I was in you know I'm also from Rhode Island so I was swimming up in Massachusetts on a really 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 elite good club team up there <laughs> my, one of my best friends went to the Olympics three times she won a silver medal at the Olympics like wow it's just not it's it's like you know those gymnastics camps that they send kids to and you're like oh well like that's what you do like you're like in this little you know yeah. different different upbringing than you would normally have so yeah it was very intense let's just call it that yeah I know a lot of um just like because I my frame of reference I grew up playing a lot of tennis and I knew some intense yeah. tennis players and people who went I mean one of the people one of the players from our camp went pro and basically, oh, cool. at a young age, he decided, like, he started getting homeschooled, had a whole different structure to his day than most people. And it seems like the level that you were swimming at, it would change your schedule, like, to a very high degree of what the ordinary person's was. Absolutely. Like, one of the things that we would do in high school was we would go up to, um, have you ever heard of altitude training? I think I have. Yeah. So basically, like the U.S. Olympic Training Center is in Colorado Springs. Yeah. Uh, so it's at high altitude, which means there's less oxygen. So it's tougher to, to train there. Your blood gets thicker, <laughs> whatever science happens. And you are faster when you come back down. So as a kid, my club team would go up there for like a month at a time, or like several weeks in a row for camps. And like mm -hmm. during the school year, because we would be going around competition schedules. So I'd be like, see ya. <laughs> I'm yeah. out of here. and you have to like arrange with your school to get all your assignments and stuff like that and like bring your textbooks and like learn from the textbooks but mm -hmm. um yeah no totally different I didn't have to be homeschooled thankfully but I know a lot of my friends who who moved their entire family would move so they'd be closer to a like North Bal Baltimore was a really good um swim team that's where Michael Phelps was or there's like a this um Pinecrest or like a couple of the groups down in Florida that were really, really good. Um, so people would go and move there, the California schools. So it was crazy. Like, yeah. Uh, the other side is you're also like competing against people who you've known your whole life because usually, especially in swimming, it's one of those things you, some people get good later on after only swimming for a couple of years, but it's pretty rare, a lot more rare than the folks that started when they were under 10 years old and just have been grinding and been pretty good and like getting consistently better so yeah very tight-knit community yeah that makes were those schools designed specifically for swimming or were, were they just like high schools with great swim teams um no so actually like there's not that many high schools with 
or the high schools with good swim teams is a little bit different. So we all had, like, I went to Prout in Rhode Island and, yeah. um, which was great. I loved it, but their swim team was, was good for Rhode Island swimming, but Rhode Island swimming is not that like hyper competitive, you know? Right. right. Um, it's not like Texas high school swimming, which would actually be pretty intense. So I did Rhode Island high school swimming and I did a club team. And these club teams are the ones like that were designed more for, you know, getting to the Olympics or getting to got it U.S. Nationals or whatever it was. So that's where the bulk of my training, like I didn't do any of the practices with the high school team. I only yeah. practiced with my club team, but I would compete for my high school team. Everyone has different rules for that, yeah. but that's kind of how we did it. I'm sure Pratt was happy about you being in the, in the competitions. <laughs> we were, I mean, I, I, lo- I had a lot of friends. Like I liked it a lot. I wanted to go to more of those practices, but it just didn't make sense. You know, it's like, yeah, it's, yeah so many hours in a day that's so intense did you ever go to one of the high school practices or was it always the club oh team? yeah I went on like a handful of them okay um, okay what, what was the training schedule like for the club team because I think like I mean was was social life impacted like growing up like, like <laughs> yes <laughs> it's not existent <laughs> so it wasn't as bad as some folks because we didn't have morning well no so basically my club team because we all live like 45 minutes away from it Mm-hmm. So that's a lot of driving. Um, so we couldn't really do two practices in a day. It was too far to go to get there and then to school and then go back. Because most of the time for swimming, you would do a morning practice. Like in college and after, I would do a morning practice, go to class, do whatever, and then come back in the afternoon for an afternoon practice. Both of them are like two hours or so. And then you'd have weight sessions. So for my club team in high school, we um, didn't have morning practice, but we would swim for like three hours and then have an hour before um of like dry land or weights or whatever it may be so it'd be an hour so basically like a three to four hour workout Mm -hmm. and then on the saturday and sunday would be depending on how where we are on the training it'd be like between three to five hours that we'd be at the pool of training not necessarily swimming the whole time but like pretty pretty extensive so they were really really long practices (laughs) yeah (laughs) and uh there were no days off like it was all the time so it wasn't like you technically had your Saturday nights, but like, I remember like my favorite thing in high school was when I would get home from Saturday practice. Cause that was usually one of our hardest ones. And yeah. I would sleep for like three or four hours, like during the day, I was just like so tired. Then you need to get all your schoolwork done. And then you have Sunday morning workout again, so you're back at it. So oh, wow. it was crazy. I like, but the thing is that everyone has kind of, you start doing it at such a young age that like, you don't really kind of, you don't understand that that's not normal. I mean, you get it, but it's such an ingrained part of your routine and your life. Like my parents were actually really great. They always made it my choice to swim and I loved swimming, but the, you don't go through that much training to, and not hate it at times. There were yeah. definitely times where I was like, fuck this, I'm going to quit. <laughs> yeah. Um, but their whole rule was like, you can't quit um, unless it's between seasons. And there were two main seasons in the year. Mm-hmm. And inevitably you'd get through the hard training you get to your big competition and you'd be like ah i want to do it again you know yeah so everyone wants to quit during like christmas training or like for thanksgiving the day before thanksgiving we'd have thanksgiving off which is a huge oh big treat yeah the day before thanksgiving we'd have a six hour practice in the water it was fucking insane <laughs> wait wait we'd food. like yeah. we'd eating during the practice like in like you'd like get a bite and like keep swimming like it was crazy for, for thanksgiving so you said you had thanksgiving off but right? the day before thanksgiving the day before and oh and th- thanksgiving day you did the six hours no 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 the day before thanksgiving was the six hours and thanksgiving was off oh got it good so two, so two, it was like oh you have off but you're just basically doing two practices in a row <laughs> oh got it they yeah. made you put in the work that you would have done um yeah. Were you, were you, you said, you mentioned you hated it at times. Were you, did, do you feel like it at times it became a lot of um, just like pressure? Cause I know when you oh, train God. that intensely and you go to like a competition, I have observed it like just in tennis. Like I've seen, like I wasn't at the most intense of the people who were top in our region, but I like, I witnessed it. So I'd see like at a tournament, I'd see like some people who like had parents who were very like intense and they put their kid through a lot similar like levels of training. Oh yeah. And, uh, and then it just becomes like a big deal. Like what happens? And at such a young age, I'm sure that's tough to 
to manage? What's weird is I thought I did um, being the young age component of it was actually it was easier to manage then. Mm -hmm. And I think it was partially because I didn't like get it fully. Like it was a big deal to me, but like most of the reason I like going to practice was like there were like my crush was there and stuff like that. You know, <laughs> like, oh. yeah. I loved going fast and I was really talented at that age. So I would win a lot. And I was like, this is fucking dope. This is great. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, so I didn't get as nervous then. I definitely got nervous, but not nearly as much. It was really like later on in the later parts of my career that the pressure really kind of started coming down. Like, especially when I was doing it professionally, like, yeah. Um, but, but you're right. It was absolutely like compared to like a normal childhood, super, mm -hmm. like I was wearing an American flag on my cap in like when I was like 14, you know? So you're just like, Oh shit. <laughs> Don't fuck up. <laughs> 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 Yeah. You're like, I already uh, represent America. Yeah. Yeah. As you can imagine, that was like kind of a, oh. Like, yeah. Yeah. But it was, I mean, it was a cool experience. I was definitely very grateful for all of that. Um, and you do a lot of training to try to be able to deal with that pressure. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. And then also, I was lucky that, again, my parents were, they were definitely really intense about it, but also like very much, you know, we love you separate from your swimming um so i was lucky in that regard i definitely have friends whose parents maybe weren't as graceful about that um how they handled that so yeah i've seen that it fuck you up pretty bad <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah, I've, I was lucky. yeah i've definitely seen that the parent the parents oh, were yeah. too too intense with it yes uh, and it's so, so but don't worry. Once I got to college and uh, after, I like really fucked myself up in the brain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, why not? Let's just lean in on that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <Can imagine? laughs> no, right. um, you did, you talked about how, well, yeah, post the high school and then college and stuff, it, the pressure may, you, like when you were younger, the pressure may not have been as much or like um, you weren't feeling it then but then after you may have felt it more in those times where like maybe you were swimming at college and then you know going to like the olympic like trials and stuff like that how did you try to stay in the moment like at those competition in your training because yeah. like, so, then it's be real one of my favorite stories is actually the first olympic trials that i went to um mm -hmm. it was 2008 and i was 17 um so it was my first one that i'd made and um, I wasn't seated good. I was supposed to, I was like 30 something or something like that. So I was, I was like, oh, okay, I'll go and I'll like swim a fast time, but I probably won't make it for Olympic trials. They do the morning swims, prelims, uh -huh. and then the top two heats. So 16 swimmers swim again at night. Okay. And then the top eight from that swim the next day. So it's different. Usually it's just one, like everyone. And then the top two heats, this time it's three rounds. But, um, so I was like 30 something. I wasn't even expecting to make the top two. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, I ended up dropping a lot of time, like seconds, which in swimming is a big deal. Yeah. And I made it back to the, the semifinals. Um, then swam again there, did really well again, dropped a little bit more time and made it back eight for finals. And this was my first time finaling at like a big national US level of competition. Yeah. Um, I was 17 at the time. So I was like pretty young for that still. Um, and I had to swim. It was girls. It was like Amanda. This isn't going to mean anything, but like, if anyone knows about swimming, it's Amanda <laughs> Beard was into that heat, Rebecca Sony, um, like Tara Kirk. It was like the most star. It was all the people like, it was like my heroes growing up. It'd be like, if you were like all of a sudden, like, oh, shit, that's Shaq. Like, oh my God, <laughs> what? I gotta like compete. And so I was shitting my pants. Like I was 17 years old and the way they have it, like going is it was fourth of july was my my event and we were the first final of that night which meant two people in that heat of eight were gonna make the olympic team and they'd be like the first olympians of that night on the fourth of july so it's a big deal yeah huge fifty thousand state people um stadium and they had everyone in red white and blue shirts like they had put them on the seats so it was like a sea of red white and blue mm -hmm. they have fireworks going off next to the fucking pool because why not this is in omaha nebraska they can do whatever the hell there's no rules the fucking regulations are good shit the fireworks going off and the whole crowd is chanting usa and because i qualified eight what they do is they announce 
the people one by one, they like yell your name and you come out and like they fill the end lanes first mm -hmm. and the, the top qualifiers in the middle. So I was in the end lane, which meant I was the first to be announced. So I'm like, a man, like all these people who I've respected and like been watching their videos, like their tape, like their technique tapes, my entire life are behind me. Yeah. The crowd is yelling USA. I'm 17. Like, I was like, this is the scariest slash coolest, but also I think the scariest thing that's ever happened to me. And I swam like shit in that race. <laughs> <laughs> I did not do well. <laughs> but that was just, that was like kind of the first really big dose of pressure I really ever experienced. Like I'd had little ones before, but that one when I was, I was like, oh, fuck me. Like, this is really <laughs> intense. <laughs> and didn't go so well as a result it was fine I was still very happy with my overall meet performance but I came in eighth and I got eighth I was yeah last to that wall but the next week it was funny because I went to another meet in um, Monterey Mexico it was like 18 and unders and no pressure at all like they were like don't drink the water like it was like very chill like not like home like yeah. United States competition uh, but I was competing for the U.S. there, and we were all, like, still tapered, which means, like, we were super rested from all of our training. Yeah. And I went at best time again. And I went a time that would have gotten me fourth the week before at the U.S. Olympic trials. So it was funny because it was, like, it was a week apart. I was physically the same person, you know. It was the only difference was in my head. And yeah. I, I didn't really believe I should have been there in the first week at U.S. Olympic trials. I was like, I'm 17. What am I doing here? Yeah. But the week after, I was like, oh, whatever. We're all 18 and under. And, like, who cares? Like, you know, I have every right to be here. And I did really well. I think I, I either got second or first in that event. And I went a time that clearly qualified me to be there the week before. You know? Yeah. So it was a really interesting, like, experience, like, how pressure can negatively affect you yeah yeah a, so, a break <laughs> yes. so but that's it i mean at that young an age it's i mean it's completely understandable especially in your first yeah. time in that scenario exactly i was like not mad about it but yeah. it was still it was a is a pretty interesting like case study on it yeah how did you feel how did you feel in the in the first one for like the trials like how did you feel in because what you were saying to me is you got, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you got to the final eight, like the final heat, right? Yeah, yes. Which and then, swimming. yeah, and then, and then from there, if you get in the top, do you have to win in order to get into, onto the team? Top two. The top two make it in an individual event. Sometimes for the freestyles, for the relay events, then the top six make it, which is bullshit, but like, whatever. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That works. laughs> um, no, but top two and um, any, uh, like the 200 breaststroke, which is the event I was swimming in. Got it. We'll so then it. Did, you, did you feel, did you feel it, like the mental side of it? You, you mentioned to me oh. like it was a lot intense. And then how do you think in that moment, what did it feel like swimming those laps? Um, panicked. Yeah. They really panicked. Like it was one of those things. I don't even have like that many memories from it. I feel like my mind kind of went blank. And that's part of the reason that like we do so many reps of things, like so much comp like practice. And I was young, so I didn't have that under my belt as much. Like that practice swimming that fast and stuff like that. The um when you get in that high of a pressure situation, you really heavily rely on muscle memory, unless you're like a fucking freak and can like, <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, but for the most part, you're not going to really be able to con control how your body goes through that performance, which means that you better have the best habits in the world. Like you better, you better automatically perform your joke correctly or, you know, hit your turns or whatever it was. And, um, I was 17, you know, I got a lot better at that over the years. Um, I definitely had a lot of slip ups through the time and I definitely had times where I was much more riddled with anxiety for you know bigger reasons and all this other shit yeah um that was my first real big experience with it especially at an international or like an i guess that was a national stage the week later was an international stage and i was like no problem okay. <laughs> <Fine."> <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah that's yeah. crazy it, it, unusual childhood Let me just yeah say that. yeah yeah it that that reminds me of um Sorry, I bring up tennis a lot. That's just my friend. Oh, I know, I know um, 
like in tennis, like I've noticed because I love well, watching it and I was around it growing up, like people, I would get like tight, like mm -hmm. in a big yeah. moment sometimes. Like I would like, it was a big moment. It's like yeah. if you, yeah, if you see on TV, like, um, you know, big players, like in big moments, like at the Grand Slams or something, like you're in a final and you have to hit a second serve and yeah. you're like on the brink of losing. And it becomes a lot bigger and, and you get tight and usually you miss because you feel it. Yep, absolutely. Uh, no, anxiety is, um, it's interesting because a little bit of it, like nervousness and excitement for something feels pretty similar, like psychologically, mm -hmm. but when it turns up a notch into anxiety, it can become like panicky, you know, and then that actually starts to detriment you. So yeah. it's like a little bit of it makes you better like hyper focused and stuff, but too much of it, and you're like, oh, you fall apart. Yeah. So being able to like kind of control that balance, which everyone has differing degrees of, you know. Yeah. So that was so then that was pre college, right? Seventeen. Yeah. And then and then you went to Texas, right? University of Texas. And yeah, then... no, I actually timed it pretty well because I that meet was the junior to senior year, which back then that was when recruiting started for college. Um, so I went to the University of Texas, I did all my recruiting trips and ended up going there. Um, and then it was a totally different ball game because then you're competing for the university as well. Plus like, you're not living at home, blah, blah, blah. Like there's pressure for your scholarship and stuff like that. Yeah, you're dealing with that. Um, exactly. Yeah. Um, so that that makes sense that that now you now you're it in school and you have to deal with like learning how to be on your own in addition to training so hard and studying right yeah um, and then and then I, I i read like in the sport tech article like basically like post graduation you came to this decision point where you're like you you know you had a successful collegiate swim career and um you like you then you're like all right let me try swimming professionally for a little while. And, yeah. um, and, but then you also had like the sense in your brain to be like, Oh, let me try and also get um, a job at the same time, or at least get some off ex experience. Right. Yeah. Cause there's like no money in swimming. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I found that very mature, like to be able to say like after swimming that much and still having the aspiration, like you didn't give it up. You were like, all right, I'm still going to go after it, but I still want to be mature enough to like, yeah. Yeah. Like, it's one of those things. It's, it's really tough because like, I guess my parents, again, they were, they were really great through all of this. And they were basically like, you can't just swim for the next couple of years and then like have no job experience and be whatever, 25. I mean, you can, but like, that's going to be a much more difficult transition than if you kind of try to kickstart this now, at least to some degree. So what does that look like? Do you get another degree? Uh, that's a whole thing yeah. or do you you know work part-time or even full-time like I actually technically was working full-time because I was working in a very flexible situation um yeah while I was training and they were really they were it was a startup that was really nice about like supporting what I was doing which is so again I was very lucky and grateful for that but it was a lot of hard hours like it was tough yeah Basically, like when you have school like that's pretty similar in the sense that you're also trying to balance a bunch of stuff as well you know yeah so it's, time management yeah it's almost like that hustle from like your childhood didn't end up yeah. and, <laughs> for a very it long time <laughs> no it did not no it did not no I was very ready to retire when it all came to I was like I want to sleep because okay so once you went to college our schedule changed and we were swimming from um it was 5 30 to 7 30 in the morning yeah and then three to five at night when two to three was weights so like that's a it's pretty early you yeah. know yeah yeah so that, those are that's an intense schedule and so i did that and then i did it for three years afterwards so i swam for seven years at texas um and it's just i was like i'm i'm very tired yeah <laughs> it's a lot more work than you would typically do yeah <laughs> what time did you have to go to bed usually you i mean you have to you have your coursework right so i started in chemical engineering believe it or not yeah. and then that was like oh that's not going to work with labs and stuff like you know in college they're they're not as flexible with them allowing you to get around stuff yeah especially if you have like a specific lab you have to do 
Mm -hmm. Um, so I ended up doing economics and business, which looking back, I'm actually pretty happy about because I work in cybersecurity now. Yeah. And that was a much better transition over. And I really liked the industry I'm in now. Yeah. Was it, was it hard to make that transition like into an office setting? Yes. Why? No, but no, in some ways, but yes, because like I was really good at swimming. Mm -hmm. So, and I'd worked on it for so long that I, you know, moved up the ladder and stuff like that. And then you don't get to transfer that into the office. You know, you get some kudos, like some people are like, Oh, she was an athlete. Like, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so you still have to start like at an entry level position. It doesn't mean you know how to put together a PowerPoint correctly and stuff. And like, you know, a lot of the stuff that I've used to get better at swimming helps me get better at other things faster because I know how to learn skills. Yeah. But that I mean, I have to, I still have to go through the process of learning. You know, you can't, there's no way to skip that. Yeah. So it only maybe like fast forward it a tiny bit. Yeah. So uh, that was, um, I knew that and I knew that rationally, but it's still tough to actually go through, right? You're like, ah, shit, I really do have to start over. Like I worked so damn hard for 20 years. Are you kidding? None of this comes over, but (laughs) none of it really, really. Yeah. Um, But you know, best way to to get started on that is to get started. And I definitely utilized a lot of the relationships and the skills that I developed while I was doing sports to get better at my job. Yeah, probably a lot of that like discipline. Yeah, I mean, discipline and also like, it does make it easier to work hard because you're like, I'll never be in physical pain, which is cool. That's true, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize that's like, that's actually pretty important to me from now on. <laughs> yeah. No more physical pain while I'm working. <laughs> yeah. As long as you sit with good posture, you have to sit with good yeah. posture so that when you're 50, 60 years old. Exactly, exactly. Uh, but um that's a tough transition i i do want to lean into that you know you said swimming's not too uh monetarily uh yeah. like, feasible and um what would it take in swimming to have it be at, like a viable economic source okay so a couple of things like i did make i had um i was sponsored by arena which mm-hmm. um, they were great but those sponsorships arena is you know the technical suits that swimmers wear like if they yeah. go to their knees or like longer like if you remember from some of them they would go down to their ankles yeah absolutely. they're like five hundred dollars they're very expensive and mm-hmm. they don't last very long at all like they last maybe two meets like for a big meet you'll wear one you'll maybe have a couple of those suits so it's mm-hmm. very expensive so as a result if you're fast some of the bigger swimwear companies arena speedo tyr uh there's a number of them they would sponsor you and you would do photo shoots with them and all this shit and like release stuff on social media, blah, blah, blah. So that younger swimmers would all buy these suits. Got it. So I was sponsored by arena. So I had some money coming in from that. And mm-hmm. then um, sometimes depending on the year, depending on how fast I was going that year, I would make the stipend for the U S national team, which was, they would pay you a very small um, livable, depending on the city, not in New York. <laughs> <laughs> like in Austin, sure. Um, <laughs> salary where you'd get a little bit of money. But the problem with that is it wasn't like a guaranteed couple of years. It was one year or one season's worth of money and you'd have to requalify. And it's so competitive and so hard at the US. Like the US is so good at swimming that potentially the top three or four people in an event in the US would all be able to final at the Olympics. But yeah. only two go. So it's extremely like cut or, like cutthroat in that sense. Got it. Um, so for, for money, it was, yeah, definitely very, very, very tough to make money as a swimmer. You'd get grants and like I would teach clinics and stuff like that as well. Um, but you're also trying to focus on like what you're doing and like training and like getting your rest and doing what you, if you were in school, like in school, you have your scholarships and stuff like that. So it's not as intense at that point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, yeah. And worrying about money is a huge, I mean, it's in comedy, too. it's in everything. It's, that's yeah, what, yeah. I think that's like the biggest thing about being an adult, turns out. Like, that's a yeah. huge part of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> adult experience. Especially in those uh, 
and types of endeavors though like i think particularly oh, yeah. in uh sports and like entertainment yes it's it's uh even more vol volatile i think one of the worst parts was i was um so worried about getting injured because if you got injured then there was no way for you to qualify for your funding the next year yeah like and i had that one of the seasons i um i had a sports hernia which basically means i had like a small hole in my hip like the muscle had pulled off the bone and i had to go and get that repaired and i was really lucky because i was under the health insurance for the olympic like um the u.s olympic training center like they had health insurance that i had qualified for so mm -hmm. i got fantastic coverage but that meant i obviously wasn't going to swim very fast that year so i didn't qualify for money and then i would like shit, like you know scramble yeah. and like so it's tough like it's a double-edged sword and then yeah. you know but but really like any time my knee would hurt or like if you'd be training and like something felt weird in your shoulder that wasn't just like oh man it hurts it was like oh no like it hurts like shit <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah all of this stuff coming down on you so injury maintenance was like so anxiety producing all the time mm -hmm. and then obviously the other side of it is like you don't want to stop training for something that's not a big deal so you have to you're always second guessing yourself you're like no 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 i'm fine no i'm fine yeah like, it doesn't hurt, but you don't know when it's serious and when it's not. Like I trained with that sports hernia for way longer than I should have. And just, it just, I could have gotten it repaired way earlier maybe. And like, you know what I mean? So like listening to your body, it would be very good about. Yeah. That's part of the deal. That's uh, again, yeah. I, I wouldn't recommend, I mean, it was a really amazing experience, but I'm just like, there's easier ways. Don't go into swimming if you want to make money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's my my thesis yeah S same advice with comedy right <laughs> same advice yeah i know i love when people are I'm like this isn't like there are a lot easier ways to make money what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah um no that that makes a lot of sense w one of one of the things i'm thinking about because now i didn't i didn't know that i didn't think about that too like you know post uh, college once you decide to keep swimming like you know that the stipend or getting paid like works that way in that system yeah. like that's exactly. how they pay you and then how do you deal with um just like being able to I don't know like you even after college basically like the way I think about it is like you work you're getting office experience right right but then you were also like oh like I want to go towards like this goal um how did you deal with that like just like oh like i really want to reach i want to reach like the p potentially the olympic team right right and while also like working and then like like just managing that side of it um yeah. i mean that was that was everything that was like everything i was trying to accomplish right there was i i knew for my career and for like work i was like okay i want to start building skills and like not be just completely new, but I'm also not super worried about like, you know, going after that promotion or, you know, really not, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'll, I'll put like heavy, intense career climbing that I can put on hold for a couple of years, just with a caveat of like, I'll start building those skills. And like, and it was kind of understood between my, me and my employer. They like, they got it, you know? Yeah. They're like, it's fine. Like, you're helping us do all like X, Y, and Z. I was working on a lot of their like IT systems and stuff like that. It's fine. Yeah. Meanwhile, though, a lot, like almost all of my focus was going on swimming, but that didn't mean like, I still had to physically go to the office and do shit, you know? And like, I would still get stressed out and I also wanted to do well there. So, and, and yeah. obviously make, make money, um, like not get fired. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> big, big, big goal of mine. Yeah. Um, and that was really, really tough. Like, I was very tired. And, like, I am happy I did it that way. It's also one of those things, like, you look back and you're like, what if I hadn't, like, worked at the same time as swimming? But I frankly think, like, having that security of knowing, like, hey, I've taken my financial situation into my own hands. And, like, I, I'm not relying entirely on swimming did kind of alleviate some of the pressure. Yeah. Um, but, but, I still had a shit ton of pressure that was tough for me to handle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I well, feel, not enough of the pressure. <laughs> I feel like that's uh, similar to how even comedians operate. Like, I think I felt that in uh, 
like because if you're pursuing something so intensely outside of work right and you're yeah. doing it to the um you're doing it to the umpteenth degree exactly yeah. but it's like uh you're afraid of getting promoted but yeah. you also don't want to get fired so you're like I, i've joked around too i'm like i just don't i don't want to get promoted but i don't want to get fired <laughs> what the same <laughs> amount of work stay steady, stay yeah. steady. <laughs> don't but I, I have to say like i i feel for the comics because at least for swimming the one benefit i did have is i was like uh which ironically the poor people now don't have <laughs> is i was like okay in june july 2016 this shit's gonna go down one way or another and then i'll be like done or yeah. you know moving on or like it'll be a significant end date on this period of what I'm up to because that's the other thing with swimming like you can't really financially rely on it for your entire life unless you're Michael Phelps there's there's probably less than 10 people that's even being generous 10 ish that could only swim their entire life and be fine you know what I mean yeah. it's just not that kind of a sport which is fine yeah um so that means that by the time you turn 30 depending on your event um probably a little bit before i retired a little bit before because i my race is too damn long for my joints <laughs> anymore yeah. i'm 28 now and i'm like hell no yeah. <laughs> like, it would fall apart your yeah. knees they just get old <laughs> like, yeah which is fine um so i retired at 26 which is pretty old for a woman actually which yeah. is crazy to me. Yeah. So you, can, you obviously have to continue to do shit after that. You can't yeah. just feel like, all right, like I'm retired. Yeah. So, even, yeah. even like the, if you think about it, even like the greatest athletes, like in a way too, like, or in a, like, I don't know anybody, like, yeah. I think of Brady because I grew up watching Patriots. Yeah. It's like, he, even he's going to have to figure out what to do after sports. It's like, right. Got, and I mean, he's in the position where he doesn't have to worry about money necessarily. He's in like one of the most lucrative sports and has yeah. probably the best contracts, but yeah. he's to do something, you know, he's not going to just straight chill. I doubt he'll go into like working at an insurance company, but like, yeah. Uh, but a lot of people, other people on, let's say, say someone on the Patriots, who's like one of the less known players, yeah. they'll actually retire. And what do you do then? Yeah. You know, kind of yeah. face, you know, the funniest thing about it, was my dad retired he did like his whole life at raytheon uh -huh. and i retired the same summer which was fucking bonkers because we had both retired from <laughs> careers my mom was like what's happening <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of stress in yeah. this household <laughs> yeah like, i came back and stayed with them for a little bit then it was it was crazy it was yeah. funny that, that is crazy that you you have like, I'm retiring with you, dad. Yeah, me and my dad. I was like, retirement's hard, isn't it? He's like, a year twice. That's good, though. I think, like, even the move you made, I, I think it was probably created, and my mom always says this as a quote, but, like, do your best, forget the rest. And, like, it, it be, being, I know, it's so cute. <laughs> Shout out. I mean, that's true, though, right? Like, what the fuck else are you supposed to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout, shout out to Mama Patel. Thanks for raising me. Um, so, <laughs> they, <laughs> but um, yeah, and and I feel like when you have a job, and even as I do comedy, and like you were doing, you're you know doing swimming, like working while doing it probably was like okay, I can do my best at this swimming thing, like all these trials, like even though it's so intense, like I can do my best at it. And even if it doesn't pan out, like, I'm going to be okay. Yeah. Diversify your portfolio, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's just yeah. the best way to go. Yeah. And yeah. also, like, the thing is, though, to be really, really good at something, you do have to really dedicate yourself. So basically, like, the harsh reality was to do that, I had to cut out most of everything else in my life. Like, I didn't do much social shit. I guess I still was up to stuff. It's like I, most of my relationships and friendships were through swimming. So that was lucky because it was like my coworkers or whatever were my social life. Mm -hmm. um, but like I did improv a little bit, but, but that was basically, that was my whole thing. Like, you know, swim, work, swim, eat, sleep. Like that was yeah. it, you know? For a long time. For a long time. Yeah. And then, well, the, it's interesting. You mentioned improv. I want to know, like, how was that transition into, you know, you were swimming, 
very elite swimmer. And then all of a sudden, whenever you start doing comedy, uh, you start at the bottom and you oh, got to yeah. way up. And how did that, how did that, that drop was probably like, how do you like, cause you train so much and you got to this elite level at this thing. And then all of a sudden in comedy, it was probably like, oh my God, I have to build from the ground up again. Yeah. How do you let go of your like ego and just like start from anew? Yeah, it's definitely super humbling. I, it's one of the things I love about comedy though. So the whole, my whole swimming saga ended with like, <laughs> I was supposed to make the Olympic team, like major supposed to make it. I went a time in January of that year that like would have won Olympic trials, hands down, very good, wow. very good time. Yeah. Uh, and I've been consistent, like winning all these events and stuff like that. Like I was the favorite. Which year was this? 2016? 2016. 2016. And the year, four years before I got fourth at the trials. So mm-hmm. like a couple people had retired. Like I was like, all right, this girl, like she's been tracking and mm-hmm. I shit the bed. <laughs> like, I did so bad. I know. I know. It's <laughs> terrible. As you can imagine at the time I was just like, well, fuck me. Okay. <laughs> But I think looking back, first of all, it would be very difficult to have like gone through and just like nailed it, nailed it, nailed it, like made the Olympic team. Oh my God, amazing. And then like go to comedy and just not be the biggest douchebag in the world. You know what I mean? Like I was just, (laughs) I ate shit so hard. And at the time I was so upset, but then I think it really kind of, it, it was a hard reset on my brain. It was yeah. like holding the power button on a computer. And I had to like really examine who I was as a person. I was, I was pretty proud that I had kind of put eggs in those other baskets and that I knew that there were things I had to offer the world beyond going back and forth in the pool. Cause ultimately who cares? Like it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. It's cool. It's cool, but it's not that important. Like there are other things that you do for the rest of your life. Yeah. Um, so I was like, okay, I want to do well at work. That's important to me. And then I also want to develop other things in my life. And uh, ironically, I had met Matt a couple months earlier before Olympic trials, uh-huh. and I'd always really loved comedy, and I'd been doing improv, and I really enjoyed it. But um, you know, it wasn't swimming, so I didn't, I wasn't focusing on that much. I did classes and stuff like that, and I was part of a little troupe, um, which we did a little bit of stuff with, but it wasn't by any means serious. Mm-hmm. And so when I was like, okay, so this is something that I enjoy. You know, I want to kind of continue to explore those types of things because I've never really had a time in my life that I've been able to do that. And so what I did is I started taking more classes and I started taking the sketch comedy class and, you know, I dated Matt more and I started working more in my career, Mm -hmm. uh, figured out how to work out without training. Like it's different. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) There are different things. Yeah. Um, And eventually we moved to New York, which was the craziest experience ever because I moved from Austin, Matt lived in LA. We both moved in together in New York City mm-hmm. after having only dated long distance for a year or so, mm-hmm. which is like not what I would usually recommend people do. <laughs> yeah. That is a psychotic move. I would never say to anyone you should do that, but it worked out, thank God. Yeah. I was like, we're either gonna break up right away or like live together for like, you know, this will work very well. You know, we're still yeah. living together four years later, so it's fine. Yeah. Um, but- um, Gotta and then take the risk. <laughs> yeah yeah it was a hell of a risk but that was I guess kind of the thing is that I wanted to take more of those risks and it took me a while to really get the nerve up to start stand up I did improv for at UCB and um t- took some classes at Magnet as well so I did a lot of improv and sketch stuff when I first got to New York and I really liked it but I always knew I wanted to try stand up mm. and then once I tried stand up I was like yeah I'm gonna do this now yeah this is better. <laughs> when did you know you wanted to try stand up Huh? When did you know you wanted to try stand up? I always like pretty much the first time I watched one of the lower level shows Matt was on yeah. where cuz I think one of the things I never knew people could do it. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, so 100%. I feel like think about like the people who do stand up are like real. Yeah. <laughs> It took a really, it took an embarrassing long time for that like bridge to kind of come together, especially because I was doing improv. I still never thought about, oh, I could just like do stand up. Yeah. And I just didn't think I'd like have anything to say or I don't know. So it took a really long time to kind of come to terms with that. But once 
ironically watching people suck at it or do bad or bomb that was when I was like okay I can do that I think you know what I mean yeah (laughs) okay yeah you know I when I went to when I was in New York I went to a couple mics and I didn't go up I just wanted to watch and Mm -hmm. that was I was like okay I can definitely do some of these New York open mic like literally lowest level stuff it's still still harder than it looks like I remember the first time I went up I like barely I blacked out I was just like reading the notes that I had written I was like okay and we're out of here (laughs) afterwards I like it was so cheesy I was just like so proud of myself because I was like I, well, who the fuck are you? Like you went from training in Colorado and getting your blood tested for like lactic acid. And literally I was getting pee- peeing in a cup. Yeah. Like I had someone tracking me. Like we had to submit our whereabouts all the time to make sure we weren't doping. Like I had that intensive a life. And now I'm in a basement in New York and it's just yeah. really cool. Now you can dope. Yeah, I can dope. Okay. Man. Okay. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> I don't know. So it was a really, really cool experience just being like, you get to, it's, it's very liberating to get to just like, and, and I don't think I got any, I mean, I think I got like a couple of sympathy laughs in my first mic and I was just like, fucking, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's <was> incredible. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> yeah. So that was really, that was really special and really fun. Um, and ever since then, I also really liked that, like how much you care about comedy. I feel like most comics are like this. Like, when you do well, it's the best feeling in the world. And when you bomb, you're like, well, the world is ending right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. And I hadn't really felt that level of like excitement or passion about something since sports. Yeah. So it was, it's tough to restart from the bottom, um, but it's been a really fulfilling experience and frustrating, but in the best of ways. At least you give a shit about something, you know? Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. And you, 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 you said, you mentioned you had fun up there like yeah. you enjoyed it yeah absolutely that was like well you can say whatever you want you don't get to do that anywhere else yeah you know what I mean whatever yeah you want. they have to sit there yeah and, and I I think that even with comedy and I've noticed this because I grew up playing tennis but it's like I think there's like an athletic type mindset to okay. becoming a better comedian and training as a comedian well that's part of the reason that I've been really interested and in, like Matt was really helpful Cause you know, those like just logistical things when you first start out, I didn't, I didn't know kind of the process. I was like, what are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to like have everything memorized? You know, you know, yeah. <laughs> like like yeah. how, how, what is, how does this actually come into being on stage? Yeah. And you don't under, I don't think most people understand how many reps goes into it. It's literally like going to the pool and doing your practice every single day. Matt goes up every single night, unless you're mm-hmm. in quarantine um yeah, yeah yeah as many times as you can and that's just to like improve and hone those tap like those little stupid jokes that are four or five seconds or whatever they're so short but it's gone through like 40 50 rep- repetitions to get that wording just perfect and like I didn't realize how technical it was yeah uh, and it really it's kind of cool in that way it's very similar to swimming frankly yeah just, like, the amount of um focus you need to have and like dedication to getting that stuff pulled together which is and also I love the absurdity of the fact that I'm doing a joke about like I have a joke about Jimmy Carter and Uh I'm like it's just no this is really serious like I gotta go I gotta perfect my craft when I talk about President Jimmy Carter (laughs) yeah 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 yeah. it's a ridiculous thing it's like yeah Yeah, Um, you're you're being so intense about something that like literally means nothing exactly (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and that's like the attitude too you have to like when you're on stage I feel like you, you know you have have this focus of like going towards comedy but you're like and you work very hard at it but your mentality when you're on stage or when you're presenting to people has to be very free and very like I don't yeah. care yeah and it's also so honest like the audience can tell yeah that was, I struggled a lot with that with improv for a while is yeah. that was like must be funny practice perfect get it all out and like improv obviously you're making it all up so being loose and being able to just like freely associate shit that's so important in it yeah and you cannot do that if you're too pressure filled you can't yeah. you physically cannot your brain no. won't <laughs> yeah so. you're right improv is a great skill that that helps you like kind of relax in those moments um you mentioned the technical side 
And I read in the article about how there was like a camera that kind of went with you as you swam and oh, yeah. you would observe your, your stroke technique. I wonder for you in comedy, do you look at your videos and apply like similar levels of yeah. intense analysis? Um, I try to sometimes like depends on the set. Some of the sets you're like, yo, I need a week before I watch that one. <laughs> like, I cannot <laughs> physically, like, emotionally handle watching that bomb like yeah. right away. Yeah. But um, I try to do, I try to record all my sets at the minimum. If I can get video, then that's better. Cause like you can see like, physical things that you're doing mm -hmm. and like for swimming what I would always do is every single race we would film it and like since I was a kid they'd film it and I would get to watch it afterwards and you think you're doing one thing like it'd be the funniest thing you'd think your elbow is, is so funny like I think my elbow <laughs> was high <laughs> but then I went and I was watching high <laughs> <laughs> so stupid <laughs> uh, no but like you you think your body's doing one thing the brain the message your brain is sending to your hand is like oh you know cup your hand or whatever um but then you actually yeah. see it and you're like what my fingers are spread like I had no idea uh -huh. and kind of similar in comedy where you know you're doing a performance so there's things that your brain is not able to control at the time like I didn't notice or I didn't realize like I was pacing the stage mm -hmm. for my first five, six months or something, which is pretty normal for people to do when they're nervous. It's like a twitch. But when I first got the, the video of it, I was like, girl, so where are you going? <laughs> where are you going? It's fine. Stand still. It's, it's fine. And then you realize that and you make the correction and you might go off of that again and you have to kind of recorrect yourself. But just like having a couple things to work on each time. Yeah. And it's, that's the other thing. I do a lot of coaching now too. Like I do clinics yeah. for kids and I'm always like, pick three things, three things that you want to work on. Cause you can't think of 20 at one time, your brain will explode. Yeah. So you do three things for a week and hopefully it becomes a habit and then you revisit them. And that's just how, that's how you train to get better at stuff. You can't do it all at once. It's a process. That's why you need time. Yeah. That's really good. That's good analysis. I mean, I, I, listen, I've, man, I've been coached for my entire life. I know. That <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> I, I look at my standup videos and I'm like, Oh, that was, that was pretty good. And like, I, I'm like, I can make that joke better, but I, I, I rarely am like, and I could be more attuned to this, but looking at the mannerisms of my body gestures and the way I'm moving. Dude, I know it, this is part of the reason that we started the, the podcast is because I have so many, like slightly psychotic type a ways that I look at stuff because of just the way I've been trained. Like literally I've had professional sports psychologists like teaching me how to do this shit yeah. my whole life. Mm -hmm. And some of it's crazy and I need to throw it away and others of it are applicable to other things in life. So, and then Matt has all the experience and like is actually good. So <laughs> like, <laughs> the, the combination together is kind of an interesting perspective. Or yeah. So, you know. Yeah. That's awesome. So far. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> well, we're, all, we're all doing our best. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, before, before we end this, I, I want to play uh, a little bit of a game. Yeah. Uh, it, this is called, I know you spend a lot of time in the water, you know, swimming. And yep. so, uh, this, this is called finish the sentence. Okay. Uh, and it's, it has to do with water related, uh, water related activities or maybe like shows or whatever. Uh, and I'm, I'm just going to try to, I want to see if you can finish what I'm saying. Okay. It's like Mad Libs. <laughs> yeah. In a way. So the first one is, uh, you know, the, again, all these pertain to water. Okay. So, um, finding Nemo. Nice. <laughs> um, Marco. Polo. <laughs> uh, Poland. What was it? Poland. Springs. Nice. <laughs> you don't have outside of New England, man. <laughs> When I went to Texas, I was like, are you kidding? <laughs> what? <laughs> Where's the Palm Springs water? <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I knew, wait, wait, really? Yes. <laughs> really? I was curious. And Dunkin' Donuts. I was like, this, I, I chose the wrong school. Just kidding. They eventually I can't believe they don't have Poland Spring outside of New England. That's insane to me. Yeah. Main water. It's, I mean, they, they have it like, it, it kind of trickled, like, it trickles down. Uh, it dilutes, <laughs> if I may, uh, <laughs> as you get over. But, like, you're not going to find it in California or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, I, I had a feeling that those would be pretty quick and easy, so I, I, uh, I found yeah, we, more water 
I'm just gonna test if you know some random water brands. Okay, let's see. Water brands. Yeah, water, water brand. <laughs> um, so we got ice. Water. <laughs> Cube. <laughs> Berg. Ice. Ice yeah. mountain. Ice mountain. Oh, water brand shit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that that actually that kind of sounds like a beer. That's what I thought. Ice okay. mountain. Okay. Ice mountain. Um, aqua. Spina. Yeah, that's that's um, that's one. This one that says Aqua Panna. Oh, that's another one. Turns yeah. out, yeah, Aqua. Um, we'll do one more. Uh, Highland. I don't know Highland. Highland Highland Park. I think that's a place in Dallas. <laughs> Highland Spring. Highland Springs. Uh, De Deja. Blue. Deja. Oh, nice, nice, perfect. We'll end on. We'll end on that one. <laughs> you got it. That's the Deja Blue. <laughs> <laughs> Deja. A little, they're a little like, oh, Deja Blue instead of Deja Vu. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we get it. If someone in the marketing department got a raise, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you got to drink the water over and over again. I know. I drink literally from a gallon jug. This is really? Fun. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you refill it? So much water. Um, it depends. I'm in, because um, we're down here, like I've been, Florida and Georgia have shitty water, so I get this one. But New York, I just drink from the tap because it's so good. Mm -hmm. Not always, you know, that's a privilege. We're privileged as New Yorkers. Yes, we are. <laughs> yes, we are. Um, and then I wanted to, so I did so a couple of swim trivia. So what, is, what does FS mean in swimming? FS? Yeah. False start? I think so. I think, you know, I wrote the question. I didn't write the answer. So, <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, I mean, probably false start. Yeah. I think it was, I thought it was like a stroke or something, a front. I don't know. Freestyle? Freestyle. Freestyle. Maybe. Freestyle. Yeah. You know what? It probably can stand for a lot of things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, fish swimming. <laughs> fish swimming. <laughs> um, what, what is the slowest stroke? Breaststroke, my yeah. stroke, baby. Oh yeah, that was, you know that one. <laughs> nope. The best one. You glide half the time. It's a delight. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I just thought of this. What's your favorite uh, water-related movie? Like, in uh, Jaws. say again. Jaws. Jaws, really? <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Is, probably. What else? What else did I like? I don't know. I don't like movies that much. I'm weird. Finding, Finding Nemo. Really? I think it was a good one. Yeah, yeah that's, that's my favorite. That's why I, I like. Um, yeah. Shark, shark Tale. Shark Tale. Shark Tale's a pretty good one. Yeah. Oh, I liked Happy Feet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah, ice. We we'll count it. <laughs> <Kind of. laughs> yeah. Um, and then to finish it off, I I just have this is an interesting observation. I I noticed that the top ten safety tips for swimming kind of break all the rules of competitive swimming. Probably, what are they? What so it the goes, name? so number one, and this is from swimgym.com, in case you're, <laughs> you wanna look at them. Yeah, in case I wanna fact check this. <laughs> <laughs> Verify. So the first one is never swim alone. Yeah, now you gotta do that. You gotta swim with other people. If you're yeah, that one's, that one's broken. Uh, learn, learn to swim. Okay, you got that one. Yep. Uh, Learn to save lives. That one's pretty serious. Um, <laughs> Give that, that one respect. Yeah, that one's not funny. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to laugh at that one. Um, pa pack a life jacket. You guys don't do that. No. Right? At the Olympics? No. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> we're, we're the life jacket. <laughs> um, uh, never dive in shallow water. How, ooh, how shallow is the water? It's pretty deep. That actually, like, you, we would sometimes have meets and pools that we we're like, this is too shallow. And it can get kind of scary because you dive in and you're like, fuck, it's right there. The water is, the, the bottom of the pool is right there. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <too> deep. <laughs> like, skim right around. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I just found those super interesting. I was like, I, you know, I was like, what are the safety rules for swimming? I was just Googling like about it swimming. It used to be like, um, you're not supposed to be in the water if you like think you might have an infection. And my ear hurts. Like, 
<laughs> like, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> get back in. <laughs> That's how you try to get out of swimming. Ow, my ear. I can't <laughs> this. Ow, I have an infection. What if it's commun- like, what communicable? That's how they would always refer to it. If you have a communicable yeah. disease. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's what that reminds me uh, in tennis Andre Agassi he used to I read in his autobiography he used to like uh, his dad would force him to hit a lot of tennis balls and he would like hit him way out into the woods like on purpose oh and no it, and it was a shank but he was so skilled that he wouldn't hit it in the middle of the racket he'd hit it on the racket frame so uh-huh. that his dad thought it was a mistake so uh-huh. he so that he could hit it within like this millimeter and it'd fly out that's so funny. Um, but that would yeah. get him out of practicing. We get super creative to try to get out of shit. Yeah. We have hand signals across the entire pool to be like, we're cutting this last 50 out. We're not <laughs> doing it. <laughs> Tell, we're going to gaslight the coach to think that we're done. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, we totally finished. You miscounted. <laughs> yeah. It, um, it's it, interesting to me, just thinking about that too, because even in Agassiz's case, he, his dad knew that he, he wanted his son to be a tennis player at an early age. Did your parents want you to be a swimmer right from the get-go? My dad did. My mom literally could not have cared less. Yeah. <laughs> she did not care. Yeah. But my dad, um, he knew I was good, and he knew that I like, had a chance to be, you know, who knew how successful. So he was like very much trying to encourage all of that. My mom was very supportive. Like She drove me to practice, but she was like, Dude, you can quit. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so from, from a very young age, you kind of like got started because uh, your yeah. dad was like interested in it already. Yeah. He swam in high school. So I think it was like funny. He like had two daughters and which he was, you know, loved. But the fact that I was, he loved sports and the fact that I was good at sports, he was like, yes. <laughs> yeah. <Go get> <laughs> like, hell yeah. Hell yeah, I get this anyway. I don't think I was going to get this, but I get it. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, Laura, you have to for me. Yeah, and I was like, okay, I'm five. Once again, I'm five. I'm (laughs) swimming. What is happening? (laughs) Um, Well, that was great. I think that that covered a lot. Um, I hope anyone listening, you know, picked up some insight, laughed a little bit. just on like if you're if you have a bigger goal and then you know you shift into anything new and having to reset and I think Laura's like a great inspiration for that. Um, I uh, I Laura, if you have any plugs before we end this, um, if I ever do stand up again, if we're ever allowed outside of our houses again, yeah. uh, me in New York, and um, also listen to my podcast I do with my boyfriend Matthew Broussard. I comment, you know, kind of alluded to a couple of times, but. He's great. Listen to his shit. He has to pay rent without money. Wow. So please listen to him. <laughs> and then also um, listen to our podcast because we talk a lot more about the, the stuff we were talking about today. Yeah. So, do you want to do you like, you're, yeah, no worries. Your Insta handle, it's at uh, Laura Sogar, L-A-U-R-A-S-O-G-A-R. Yeah. And Matt, and Matt's? Matt is Monday Punday. Monday Punday, right? Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Anyone listening, support, support them. Very funny. Check out the podcast. Uh, Thank you all for listening and uh, I'll see you uh, in the next episode. Well, I won't see you. You'll just hear me, but you, you know what I'm saying. Thank you guys. I do appreciate it.